Okay, so we'll go ahead and start our Sadhana session. So if you want to turn to page three. And uh, for those of you on Zoom, I'll do share screen. So just take a minute and settle into your space, having turned to the right page. Just kind of have it open there, ready to go. And then come into awareness of your posture and your body. And be a witness to your own physical experience with a very kind gaze. Imagine that you bring warmth and circulation to those areas where your body has tension. Appreciating those areas that are healthy and strong. And just scanning from the crown all the way to the toes, releasing any tightness or tension you might find. Getting yourself into balance. And as you start to settle, gradually bring your focus to the breath, allowing your surface distractions to settle. And just let the breath breathe. If you have a shallow breath, you simply know that. If you have a deep breath, you simply know that. Just be with that experience without judgment. Not getting pulled here and there by distractions. And whether a sensorial distraction or a mental distraction, just notice distraction, gently disengage, come back to the breath. Not feeding, not suppressing all the thoughts that arise.
And then visualize in the space in front, white Tara, radiant white made of transparent light in the prime of youth. Eyes in her palms, eyes at the soles of her feet, eyes gazing directly at you, a third eye open. Seated on a lotus, sun and moon. And whether you can see the details or not, whether you prefer to keep simple white light, the main thing is to feel Tara is present here with you. Think that she represents and embodies all of the qualities that you yourself are growing into your compassion, your wisdom, your abilities. Think that she's one in nature with your spiritual refuge, with all of your teachers, with the Dharma itself. And holding that awareness of Tara, then we do the refuge prayer together. I and all living beings as extensive as space from today on until the essence of enlightenment is achieved, take refuge in the glorious holy gurus, take refuge in the fully accomplished Buddhas, take refuge in the holy Dharma, take refuge in the supreme assembly. I take refuge in the venerable lady white Tara, the wish fulfilling wheel and the complete entourage of deities. I and all living beings as extensive as space from today on until the essence of enlightenment is achieved take refuge in the glorious holy gurus. I take refuge in the fully accomplished Buddhas. I take refuge in the holy Dharma. I take refuge in the supreme assembly. I take refuge in the venerable lady white Tara, the wish fulfilling wheel and the complete entourage of deities. I and all living beings as extensive as space from today on until the essence of enlightenment is achieved, take refuge in the glorious holy gurus, take refuge in the fully accomplished Buddhas. take refuge in the holy Dharma, take refuge in the supreme assembly. I take refuge in the venerable lady white Tara, the wish fulfilling wheel and the complete entourage of deities. I prostrate and take refuge in the holy guru and the three precious jewels. Please bestow your blessings on my mind stream. In order to attain the fully accomplished state of a Buddha for the sake of all living beings, I will enter into the sadhana of white Tara, the wish fulfilling wheel. In order to attain the fully accomplished state of a Buddha for the sake of all living, I will enter into the sadhana of white Tara, the wish fulfilling wheel. In order to attain the fully accomplished state of a Buddha for the sake of all living beings, I will enter into the sadhana of white Tara, the wish fulfilling wheel. And so visualize the offering set out, top of page four. So any offerings you have set up in the altar in your home, all of the offerings set out here in the land of Medicine Buddha Gompa. And then we dispel any hindrances, any superstitions about them, and then we purify them into emptiness. 
Om Vajra Amrita Kundali Hana Hana Hum Pe. Om Salavashura Saladama Salavashura Hum. Everything becomes empty. All lacking inherence. Nothing from its own side. And then visualize that out of emptiness, eight ohm syllables appear. From them, spacious, extensive jeweled vessels. Inside of which the syllables ohm transform into different offering substances which are clear, unobstructed, and as extensive as space. And if you have the empowerment, now we bless them. Om Hagyamai Hum, Om Padyamai Hum, Om Pupeyai Hum, Om Dupeyai Hum, Om Alokeyai Hum, Om Gandeyai Hum, Om Nudeya Hum, Om Shapta Ai Hum. And for those without the empowerment, think that Tara now appears above your crown, facing the same direction as you. For those with the empowerment, think I instantaneously become Venerable Tara. The syllable Tam at the heart emanates rays of light, inviting from her patala abode the Lady Tara, the wish-fulfilling wheel, surrounded by the assembly of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to the space above. Stabilize that idea, the light going out, inviting, invoking. In reality, our own heart becoming receptive too. The light dissolves back into my heart. And the prostrations together. Gods and Asuras with their crowns bow down to your lotus feet. I prostrate to Mother Tara, the one who rescues from all needs. And then we actually make the, the offerings. So as we do the offering garland, imagine that these offerings multiply, filling all of space and are received by Tara. Om Guru Haryatare Sapariwai Vyagyam Prati Sam Soha Om Haryatare Sapariwai Padyam Prati Sam Soha Om Haryatare Sapariwai you pay prati sa so ha. Om Arya Tare sa pari wa. Do pay prati sa so ha. Om Guru Arya Tare sa pari wa. Aloke prati sa so ha. Om Guru Arya Tare Sapari Wa Gande Prati Sam Soha Om Guru Arya Tare Sapari Wa Nyude Prati Sam Soha Om Guru Arya Tare Sapari Wai 
Shabda Prati Soha. And then we renew the Bodhisattva vow. So if you haven't received the vow, you can still recite the verse and think that it's an aspiration to receive these vows in the future. And so visualize that the heart of Tara is Shakyamuni Buddha and that you receive and renew these vows directly from him. Three times. I take refuge in the three jewels. I regret all my unwholesome deeds. I rejoice in the merit of all beings. I will hold bodhicitta until enlightenment. I take refuge until complete enlightenment in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. In order to fulfill the purpose of myself and others, I generate the mind of enlightenment. Having generated the mind of enlightenment, I invite all living beings as my I will remain in this excellent conduct of the bodhisattvas, thereby may I achieve the state of a in order to benefit all living beings. I take refuge in the three jewels, I regret all my unwholesome deeds, I rejoice in the merit of all beings, I will hold bodhicitta until enlightenment. I take refuge until complete enlightenment in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. In order to fulfill the purpose of myself and others, I generate the mind of enlightenment. Having generated the mind of enlightenment, I invite all living beings as my guests. I will remain in this excellent conduct of the Bodhisattva. Thereby, may I achieve the state of a Buddha in order to benefit all living beings. I take refuge in the three jewels. I regret all my unwholesome. I rejoice in the merit of all beings. I will hold bodhicitta until enlightenment. I take refuge until complete enlightenment in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. In order to fulfill the purpose of myself and others, I generate the mind of enlightenment. Having generated the mind of enlightenment, I invite all living beings as my guests. I will remain in this excellent conduct of the bodhisattvas. Thereby, may I achieve the state of a Buddha in order to benefit all living beings. And so just sit with having restored your bodhisattva vows. Those that you transgressed, have been completely restored. Those you kept purely have increased in strength. And for those of you that don't yet have them, your aspiration is strengthened, creating more causes to meet these vows in the future. And so think that the Shakyamuni Buddha at White Tara's heart comes toward you dissolves into you. Blessing your body, speech, and mind. And then we meditate on the four immeasurable thoughts, page six, pausing after each. May all living beings be endowed with happiness and the causes of happiness. And pause here to meditate on loving kindness repeating these words silently to yourself, completely silently, letting it resonate in your own mind. And continuing, may all living beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering and meditate on compassion. Repeating these lines in your mind, letting them touch your heart. And continuing, may all living beings be endowed with the happiness that is free from suffering 
and meditate on immeasurable love, excuse me, immeasurable joy. Connecting with that. and equanimity. May all living beings remain in a state of equanimity, free of attachment for those they hold close and aversion for those they keep distant. And reinforcing that in your mind. And now once again, meditating on emptiness. Om Samala Shuddha Samadama Samala Shuddha Om. Everything dissolves into emptiness. Or if you like the space of infinite possibility, potentiality, creation. You can think all phenomena are empty of inherent existence because they dependently arise, including myself, including White Tara, including this practice and its results. And think out of emptiness, from the syllable palm comes a white lotus. And from an ah, a moon disc. On top of which is my own consciousness in the form of a white syllable tam, emanating rays of light. And the light collects back. And Venerable Aryatara appears in the space in front of you if you don't have the empowerment facing you, facilitating this practice for you. If you do have the empowerment, think, I become the Venerable Wish Fulfilling Wheel with a white body, one face, two arms. Right hand in the gesture of supreme giving, left hand at the heart, and hold between the thumb and ring finger the stem of an upala flower that blossoms at the level of my ear. It has three blossoms, the center one in full bloom, the right one having already blossomed and gone to fruit, the left not yet opened. And these three symbolize the Buddhas of the three times. I'm adorned with jeweled ornaments and clad in variety of silken garments. My upright body is supported by a moon disc and I'm in the Vajra position. And my crown is a white om. At my throat, a red ah. At my heart, a blue whom. At my heart on a moon disc is the white syllable tam. Stabilize the syllables. 
They can be in English characters, Sanskrit characters, Tibetan characters, whatever represents that sound for you best, or just white, red, blue, and white. The syllable tum emanates rays of light, inviting from the Patala Buddha field in the south, the venerable wish fulfilling wheel surrounded by an assembly of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So the whole field of space filled with white Taras. I think all the Buddhas, all the Bodhisattvas take this aspect. And those actual enlightened beings then merge with the Tara that you visualized, either yourself or the one in front. They become non-dual. Again, rays of light emanate from the syllable at my heart, inviting the initiating deities. And these are the Buddhas of the five Buddha families. And so you can think that many Buddhas appear blue, white, yellow, green, red, representing the five Buddha families with Amitabha as their principal, being the head of the Lotus family that Tara belongs to. and we request them to initiate the image we visualized, top of page eight. Please bestow on me the initiation. Um sawatata gata bishakata samaya shriya um. And offering goddesses and empowering deities send down streams of empowering nectar through the crown of Tara. The body is filled, purifying all stains. The excess nectar overflowing transforms into Buddha Amitabha. And we bless offerings. Um Vajra Amrita Kundali Hana Hana Hum Pe Om Sawa Shuddha Sawa Dhamma Sawa Shuddha Om And visualize that out of emptiness from eight Om syllables appear spacious extensive jeweled vessels inside of which the syllables Om transform into different offering substances which are clear unobstructed and as extensive as space. Om Ayamai Hum Hum Padyamai Hum Om Pupaya Hum Hum Dupaya Hum Om Halukaya Hum Hum Gandaya Hum Om Nudaya Hum Hum Shapta Hum And we actually present the offerings, this time the short form. Om Haryatare Sapare Wariyai Gyam Padyam Vyuape Duape Aloke Gande Nude Shapta Prati Saham Soha And prostrations and praises together. I prostrate to Mother Tara, the liberator of beings from existence, the one who liberates from the eight worldly fears with Tutare, freeing us from all illnesses with Ture, all the wisdom and activities of compassion of the extensive Buddhas, appearing in the form of an extremely beautiful goddess, bestowing longevity and supreme attainments to a great number of beings. I prostrate to the one who is extremely white and holds an Utpala in her hand. 
and then visualize at the heart center of Arya White Tara, an eight spoked wheel with a hub and three rims. At the center on a moon disc is my own mind as a white tum encircled by the mantra for increase Om Tare Tu Tare Ture, Mama Ayu Punyanjana Pushtim Kuruye Soha. The syllables are standing upright and are radiant white. On the eight spokes are the eight syllables, Tare Tu Tare Ture So. On the inner rim, the vowels are placed counterclockwise. Om, a, a, i, i, u, u, ri, ri, li, li, i, a, o, a, om, a, so, ha. In the middle rim, the consonants are arranged clockwise. Om, ka, ka, ga, ga, nga, cha, cha, ja, ja, nya, ta, ta, da, da, na. Ta 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 da na, pa pa ba ba ma, yara la wa, sha 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 ha sha so ha. And on the outer rim is the mantra of the essence of dependent arising arranged clockwise. Om ye dama hetu pravawa hetun tesong tatagato hayavada tesonjayo niroda evamvadi maha shramanaye soha. Stabilizing that. The mantra for increase inviting the increase of life, merit, realizations. The vowels purifying the body, the consonants purifying the speech, the heart mantra of dependent arising purifying the mind. and your mind at the center as a tum. And so think the seed syllable and all the letters of the mantra are in the nature of light. And just visualize. Dew drops of nectar stream forth from the letters. And at my crown is the Lord of the family, Lord Amitayas, red in color with one face and two arms, holding a golden vase filled with the nectar of immortality. And if you're doing this practice specifically for someone who is suffering from illness or threats to their life, you can visualize them in this nectar vase. If you prefer, you can also place them at your heart with the tongue. Either way is fine. You can also keep it general for yourself and all sentient beings. Have a strong sense of warm, brilliant red light above your crown in the shape of Lord Amitayas.
His hands are in the gesture of meditative equipoise. Clad in silk and jeweled ornaments, he sits in the vajra position. He is adorned at the heart with a red syllable hri, from which hook-like red rays of light emanate in all ten directions, collecting all of my life energies that have been robbed, stolen, or caused to be taken away or scattered by human and non-human beings, as well as the essence of the five great ele elements, and the life energies and merits of all living beings the brilliance and dignity of the three worlds. So think that this red light with hooks at the end go out, bringing you back, bringing all sentient beings back, bringing the one that you're prayed for, all getting life force back. And think that this process in no way harms sentient beings. just collecting back what has been dispersed or taken. And then think all the wealth and goodness of existence and the blessings of the body, speech, and mind of the guru, buddhas, and bodhisattvas are collected back in the form of nectar and rays of light in different colors and absorb into the vase and Amitayas's hands. Red hooked light going out, multicolored light coming back. By this absorption, white nectar overflows and enters into my crown opening, absorbing into the wheel, the mantra, and the seed syllables at the heart. From that, rays of nectar flow down, filling my entire body. and think that my outer body is washed, the accumulation of unwholesome imprints and obscurations, illnesses, disturbances, and obstacles of life are cleansed and purified, thus restoring my life energies, merits, and broken vows and commitments, and I attain the city of immortality. And so hold that awareness of purifying light and add the mantra for increase. Om tare tu tare tu re mama ayu punyan jana pushtam kuru ha. 
Om tare tu tare tu re mama hayu punya jana pushtam kuru soha. Om tare tu tare tu re mama hayu punya jana pushtam kuru soha. Om tare tu tare tu re mama hayu punya jana pushtam kuru soha. Om tare tu tare tu re mama hayu punya jana pushtam kuri soha. Om tare tu tare tu mama hayu punya jana pushtam kuri soha. Om tare tu tare tu re mama hayu punya jana pushtam kuri soha. You can continue the mantra under your breath silently so that no one can hear, but still a little bit of air passes your lips. Om tare tu tare ture mama aryu punye jana pushtam kurui soha. Just make sure your neighbors can't hear you. Om tari tu tari tari mama ayu punyan jana pushtum kuri soha. And then gently expand the visualization. And so visualize outside of myself is a white wheel made of space iron with space inside like two hats joined together. The 10 spokes above, below, and in the eight directions have very sharp points turning clockwise at an extremely fast speed, thereby cutting into pieces all obstacles. Tongues of flames of light rays burn and swirl, and thus all disturbing forces are completely burnt like feathers burnt in fire. Think thus. Again, from the wheel and mantras at my heart, white rays of light emanate, filling my entire body, pacifying illness, disturbances, obscurations, unwholesome imprints, and all obstacles to life. Stabilize that.
rays of light go out through the pores of my body and form a white circle of light outside myself, bringing about the accomplishment of all peaceful activities for my own sake, for the sake of others, both. And then yellow rays of light emanate, filling my whole body, bringing about an increase of life, merit, and the wisdoms of hearing, contemplation, and meditation. Become filled with yellow light, the power of increase. And the light radiates out, forming a yellow circle outside the white circle, bringing about the accomplishment of the activities of increase. And then rays of red light emanate, endowing me with the power and energy to bring about the three worlds under my control with perfect wisdom and compassion. Fill your whole body, permeate your mind with radiant red light. and the light radiates out, forming a red circle outside of the yellow circle, bringing about the accomplishment of the activities of control, of power. and dark blue rays of light emanate, endowing me with the power and energy to achieve all activities of destruction, of wrath, and the skillful means, wisdom, and compassion to know how and when. Filling with dark blue light. And the lights radiate out, forming a blue circle outside the red circle, bringing about the accomplishment of the activities of destruction, of wrath. This fierceness only used when necessary, always motivated by bodhicitta. Stabilize the dark blue. And brown rays of light emanate, or if you prefer, copper colored or magenta, filling you up, bringing about stability of the power of the activities and attainments. Mm -hmm. 
and the light radiates out, forming a circle of that color outside the green circle, bringing about stability. All these six circles are egg-shaped and of one single piece, very hard and strong, and cannot be destroyed even by the winds at the end of existence. All the space between each circle is filled with fresh, newly blossomed blue Utpala flowers, soft and tender. Just stabilize that awareness of the circles of protection as best as you can, whether you're able to visualize or not, hold the awareness of these layers of protection. White piece, yellow increase, red power, dark blue wrath, green enlightened activities, magenta or brown stability. And holding awareness of these circles of protection, we add the mantra. This time we can use the short version of the Tara mantra. Om tare tu tare tu re soha. 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 And continue silently with just a little bit of air moving through. Om tare tu tare tu re soha. Using your mala to keep you anchored and focused. Om tare tu tare. Om tare tu tare tare so. And 
when we purify any mistakes that we made during the practice so far, particularly with the mantra, page 14. Om Padma Sapa Samaya Manupalaya Padma Sapa Deno Padishta Dido Mebo Sudo Kayo Mebawa Supo Kayo Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Sidi Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Sidam Shriam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Padma Mame Mutsa Padma Bawa Mahasam Maya Sapa Ahum Pei. Whatever mistakes I have made because of not knowing or lacking ability or not finding the proper materials, please be patient with these. Om Mariatari Sapari Wari Ai Gyam Pad Yam Kua Pe Dua Pe Halo Ke Gyan De Nua De Shapta Prati Sam Soha. And the praises. All the wisdom and activities of compassion of the extensive Buddhas appearing in the form of an extremely beautiful goddess bestowing longevity and supreme attainments to a great number of beings. I praise to the one who is extremely white and holds an Utpala in her hand. Through the merit collected by this practice, may I quickly attain the state of the wish-fulfilling wheel, and may I lead all living beings without exception to her state of enlightenment, thus dedicating the roots of merit. And blessing the offerings in the Torma, in particular, Om Vajramrita Kundali Hana Hana Hum Pei. Om Sawashura Sawadama Sawashura Oham. Out of emptiness from eight ohm syllables appear spacious extensive jeweled vessels, inside of which the syllables ohm transform into different offering substances, which are clear, unobstructive, and as extensive as space. Om hai gyam pad yam pua pe dua pe halo ke gyan de nua de shapta ahum. Page 16. Om padram rita kundali hana hana hum pe. Om sawa shura sawa dama sawa shura ham. Out of emptiness from the letter om comes a vast extensive jeweled vase, inside of which the syllable Om melts and transforms into a great ocean of undefiled wisdom nectar. Om I hum, Om I hum, Om I hum. From one's heart, from the syllable Tam, rays of light emanate, inviting the Lady Tara, surrounded by multitudes of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. They all partake of the essence of the Torma, through the opening of light at the tips of their tongues. Om Hayatare Sapare Wari Dom Bauman Chakaka Kai Kai. Om Hayatare Sapare Wari Dom Bauman Chakaka Kai Kai. Om Hayatare Sapare Wari Dom Bauman Chakaka Kai Kai. Om Hayatare Sapare Wari Dom Bauman Chakaka Kai Kai. Om Hariyatare Sapari Wari Dom Bam Chakaka Kai Kai. Om Hariyatare Sapari Wari Dom Bam Chakaka Kai Kai. Om Hariyatare Sapari Wari Dom Bam Chakaka Kai Kai. Om Hariyatare Sapari Wari Ai Yam Pad Yam Pua Pe Dua Pe. Hello, Kay, Gande, New Day, Shapta, Prati, Sam, Soha. Venerable Bhagavati Tara, please bless me to eliminate all the obstacles of life of my own and someone else's and bestow on me the attainment of immortality. And then once again, purifying mistakes. 
Om Padmasapa Samaya Manupalaya Padmasapa Deno Padisha Dido Mebawa Sudokaya Mebawa Subokaya Mebaw Anarakto Mebawa Sawa Sidi Me Prayapsa Sawa Kama Sutsame Tidam Triam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bagao Sawa Tata Gata Padma Mame Mutsa Padma Bawa Mahasamaya Satva Ahum Pe Whatever mistakes I have made because of not knowing or lacking ability or not finding the proper materials, please be patient with these. Please reside in these images. By residing for the benefit of all living beings, please bestow your blessings of health, life energy, power, and supreme attainments. Om Sutra Ticha Vajraya Soha. And the final visualization, page 18. From the syllable at my heart, rays of light emanate. All the container and contain dissolve into light and absorb into the brownish circle. The six circles and protective wheel dissolve in stages from outer to inner brown into green, into dark blue, into red, into yellow, into white. The protective wheel also dissolves into me. I absorb into the wheel, the wheel into the mantra rings the rings into the tongue, which dissolves by stages into emptiness. Out of emptiness, I arise as Lady Tara, or Lady Tara appears above your crown, marked at the crown with an om, the throat with an ah, the heart with a hum. and we dedicate together. Through the merit collected by this practice, may I attain the state of Venerable Tara and lead all living beings without exception to her state of enlightenment. When the signs of untimely death appear by seeing in the form of the wish-fulfilling wheel, the power of the Lord of Death is eliminated. May I swiftly attain the state of a knowledge holder of immortality. Through the roots of merit accumulated by this meditation, recitation, praises, and offerings to Venerable Tara, may all obstacles, interferences, evils, and disturbances be pacified, and may I enjoy the glory of immortality. By merely seeing your body, hearing your speech, and remembering you, all signs of untimely death are destroyed. In all my lifetimes, may I be guided by the Venerable Tara, and may I be able to enjoy the Holy Dharma. May I swiftly attain the activities of pacification, increase, power and destruction, the eight cities and so forth. May I quickly attain all the common and supreme attainments, and may all my hope and wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. Whoever holds the sweet dew of nectar of immortality, the sadhana of white utpala flower, in the palms of their hands respectfully, Aryatar will rejoice in that fortunate being. And then we do long life prayers for our teachers. The wish granting, wish fulfilling wheel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world. The incomparably kind, supreme Tenzin Gatso, may you have a long life and all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. You who uphold the subduer's moral way, who serve as the bountiful bearer of all, sustaining, preserving, and spreading Manjinoff's victorious doctrine, who masterfully accomplish magnificent prayers honoring the three sublime ones, savior of myself and others, your disciples, please, please live long. And you can add silently aspirations for any of your other teachers' long lives.
Okay, so you can relax your attention. And um, those, uh, anyway, those sessions will be available on my YouTube channel, so you can access those anytime. The sadhana and the commentary were emailed to you, as well as the images of Tara and the mantra. Um, a couple of extra ones will be sent to you afterwards. Um, so thank you very much for a lovely weekend, folks. Do you have any hanging questions while it's fresh? We have a couple of minutes if you have any um, questions about the practice or about Tara that are fresh in your mind or about Tantra itself. Yeah, go ahead, Tal. Yeah, I just have a question. If, if you don't have the empowerment and you delve into some of these practices, um, like the uh, self-generation, I think it's called, and when you visualize the deity or reading some of these texts that you mentioned, what is the, um, why is that not a good idea? I guess is my question. If you don't have the empowerment. Well, for lower Tantra, you can read um, the Sadhana, you can do the Sadhana, but you never see yourself as the deity because you don't have permission right? So you're visualizing whenever it's saying I am white Tara, you're thinking she is white Tara, okay? Mm -hmm. And she's either in the space in front facing you or she's at your crown facing the same direction as you, either is fine. You just don't see yourself as the deity until you have the empowerment of that specific deity. If you have a great medicine Buddha empowerment, that doesn't mean you can generate as white Tara, yeah, they're two different deities, okay? So there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, one is the blessing of the unbroken oral transmission from Vajradhara. Um, Vajradhara was the tantric aspect of Shakyamuni Buddha. So Shakyamuni Buddha showed the aspect of Vajradhara when he taught tantra. And there's an unbroken oral tradition from him to our teachers today, giving the lineage of blessings of these practices. And so we want to connect to the unbroken oral tradition and also the permission to practice contained within. And so on one side, it's just going to work better if you have the empowerment. It's going to be more effective if you have the empowerment. There's also the other side, which is until you have the empowerment, you don't have a Vajra guru to explain a lot of the things that are in the oral commentary. So there's things you can read, but not everything is written down. Some things are passed teacher to student, and you never hear those transmissions until you have the empowerment. And sometimes those instructions are only given at the empowerment or the commentary afterwards. So you're going to miss pieces if you don't have the empowerment. Um, there is a slight danger that by generating as the deity before you're empowered to do so, that you might kind of start messing around with your inner energy system and your chakras without the right amount of instruction to know what to do. And so sometimes it's just pleasant and nothing bad happens. And sometimes you can trigger a real psychosis. Mm -hmm. So like, don't play with your chakras. You'll go blind. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, you know what I'm referring to, right? Mm -hmm. Catholics, right? Um, but so it's um, <laughs> right, I'm just using, but you know, so it's like these chakras are incredibly powerful. We all have them. We've got channel knots at all of the sections, many forms of, um, you know, many Eastern religions, many Eastern uh, medicines explain about how these systems work, but you don't want to just kind of go in there like a bull in a China shop and start like fiddling with stuff we don't understand because like best case scenario, nothing will happen. Sometimes something pleasant will happen, but also something really scary could happen and then you don't have a teacher to help you navigate out of it. So it's like, just do it in the gentle way until you have the support of a teacher and a community where you have access to the resources and know where to look if you get stuck. So intellectually, we might be able to understand these things fairly quickly, but intelligence and experience are two different things. So, so it's just, it's a cautionary thing there's also an element of just like politeness. Like in Buddhism, almost everything is an open practice. Only Tantra is the closed practice, you know? And so, you know, we're very generous about anybody. It doesn't matter if you're Buddhist, doesn't matter where, what tradition you came from, use Buddhism. If you like Buddhism, take it, it's fine. You don't have to be Buddhist to practice Buddhism. But Tantra is a closed practice just for Buddhists who have that kind of deep intention to have the Bodhisattva vows, the Tantric vows, all these things. So it's also kind of a politeness of, 
you've not really been let into the inner circle until you take the empowerment and a lot happens in the empowerment that makes the practice work better. Mm. One of the big things that happens in an empowerment is taking the bodhisattva vows or refreshing the bodhisattva vows that you already have and having the merit of bodhisattva vows makes realizations happen quicker. Mm. It also protects your mind from going down the wrong road of neglecting sentient beings. So there's a lot of reasons, but is, was that kind of answering your question or were you looking That's at it? Very, very helpful. I appreciate okay. it. And thank you for yeah. the teaching. It's wonderful. Yeah, good, good. And so these are beautiful practices. I don't want you to feel intimidated by them and or feel like you can't use them if you don't have the empowerment, these lower tantra ones. I really want you to feel some like friendship and warmth and familiarity with these practices. And maybe it will grow into... I think I want to do it in the fully fledged way. I think I need to ask one of my teachers for this empowerment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And really like request them. Like why do teachers give empowerments? Somebody asked. <laughs> and usually if one person asked, then they're like, well, since we're here, let's just open it to the community. Mm -hmm. But, you know, really ask for what you need from your Dharma centers, ask for what you need from your, um, from your teachers and uh, make it happen. And even if they say no, because it's the wrong time or the karma's not there, you're creating the cause for it to happen by requesting. Um, yeah, other thoughts? Um, oh, Patty's asking about a good source to learn how to pronounce Tibetan language. Um, I mean, there are a lot of just Tibetan language courses online that can just, you could just do like the first module on the alphabet. Yeah, and just learning the alphabet often helps you with pronunciation. Um, you know, if you can do a Sanskrit course and a Tibetan course, that's going to really be excellent because, of course, the Tibetan has an accent on top of the Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, learning the Tibetan alphabet probably only takes a week if you practice hard. Mm -hmm. And it's one of these languages where um, there's aspiration. And so the first three letters of the alphabet are ka, ka, ga. And so you're like, that sounds the same. They just have more air. So when you're learning about aspiration and you're learning about some of the like TS sounds, just a quick alphabet course online, and there's tons of them, you could just go to YouTube and be like Tibetan alphabet and you'd find something, I'm sure. So that could help. Yeah. And um, often the mantras that you're seeking, a uh, beautiful Tibetan Lama will be reciting them somewhere online. And so you can find his whole, you know, type in his holiness, the Dalai Lama, White Tara, and then maybe you can hear how he says it and just practice it again and again. Now, other, other thoughts? Do you feel like you could do it at home by yourself if you wanted to? <laughs> whether you want to or not is another story but if you wanted to you could do it by yourself and kind of have a sense of it yeah okay yeah kim go ahead yeah so yeah i'm really motivated to practice this it's beautiful practice and thank you so much i remember at the start and i wasn't here earlier today so you may have already spoken about this but at the very start you had talked about a connection between this practice and long life prayers for your teacher mm. Could you just um, speak to that just a touch, please? Or how one, how those sure. are connected or how do one incorporates that? Yeah, I mean, always we want to add a long life prayer at the end of any practice for our teachers to create the cause for them to show the aspect of long life, just kind of as a general rule. But for White Tara specifically, you see it the most directly in long life pujas. Have you ever been to one of these long life pujas at a Dharma center for one of your teachers? Happens maybe once every couple of years or once a year, and it's a big whole do. Usually um, Lama Chuka Guru Puja is the practice that's done. And then lots of mantras for Nam, from Namgyalma, Amitayas, and White Tara. So Namgyalma, Amitayas, and White Tara are the three main long life deities in Tibetan Buddhism that we practice. And so we do tons and tons of those during long life pujas. Usually that's done while everybody's going up to offer a kata to the teacher and it takes ages and people are snacking and chatting, but some people are actually doing the mantra. Um, so long life pujas is a big place where we do this. But if you're wanting to do it in your practice, you can think that your Lama is in the um, immortality vase in Amitayas's lap in his ordinary form. 
yeah, just like his regular, you know, his regular robes or whatever he wears. And, and he's getting flooded with all of this. If it's an ordinary teacher, if it's a Vajra teacher, if it's a Vajra guru, if they're showing the aspect of sickness or shortened life, you don't want to get too ordinary and think that they literally have sickness or shortened life. You're thinking that we have some obstacles between us and they're showing that aspect. Mm -hmm. So you can just kind of do white Tara with the thought of I'm purifying my own health and life obstacles, but I'm also purifying anything that makes it hard for me to connect to my teacher mm -hmm. or makes my teacher show the aspect of sickness. So you're just kind of like having those thoughts in the back of your mind while doing the normal practice as written. So basically it depends on if your teacher is just kind of like a regular person that you take classes from like a facilitator, then just pop them in the vase, just like you would a sick friend. But if they're a teacher teacher, like with a capital T, don't make them ordinary. Think that you're doing this practice to purify obstacles to being in connection with them. If that makes sense. So it's kind of two ways to do it. Um, let's see. So some stuff in the chat from um, Christina. Is there anything from anybody else? Final questions? Did I press go? Yes. <laughs> that was not meant to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so it's clear enough. You guys feel good to go. Yeah, and that commentary once again. Oh, sorry, one, one Gompa question. Sorry. Dave, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, it's a little hard of hearing, and I'm having trouble with the, the names of a couple of the Oscar goddesses, but Oloke. Oh, Aloke. 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 And then the, the harder one is Navidya? New Day, <laughs> which is nothing like how it's spelled. Dave's asking about the pronunciation of the offerings. So water for washing, Argyam. Water for, or excuse me, water for, yes, water for washing, Agyam. Padyam, water for drinking. I may have swapped them, dyslexia. Pupae is flowers, pupae. Dupe is incense. Aloke is light. It's like perfume is Gande, New Day is food, Shapta is music. So the ones that people usually pr mispronounce because the English letters would make you mispronounce them. Pupe is spelled like pushpe. No, it's pupe. Yeah. Um, New Day has got a whole bunch of extra letters in there. Sometimes you could say it a better pronunciation like Nua Day but the Tibetans kind of just blur things together. And so then we do too. So new day, like a new day, a brand new day. Yeah, that's for food. Shapta, sometimes you don't even hear because people are pay playing bells. And throughout this practice, I could have been showing you the offering mudras and using the bell on the door, Jay. One reason is that who knows who will see this online. So I'd rather not if we were just privately together and not online, I might show people that have the empowerment, but it's a mixed group of some people with the empowerment, some without. Mm -hmm. So that's a, something to ask your teachers, show me the mudras once or the, the hand gestures and how to use the bell in the door, Jay, um, once you have the empowerment. Also, if I ring the bell, it's really painful for you guys listening online. So I did not ring the bell for two reasons. <laughs> One, mixed audience. Two, it hurts. <laughs> so yes. So the offerings. Um, there's lots of good commentaries on the offerings. I didn't go as much into them as I do sometimes, but I did a little chat on them when I did the Chen Resig practice a couple months ago. So you can have a look at Chen Resig practice and I go through the layers of meaning of those offerings there. All right, um, calling it today. Yeah, announcements from Medicine Buddha. No, or yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yes, uh, yes. Not necessarily announcements. I think that, let me, oh no, I don't need to unmute, right? Can you hear Christina? No, okay, yes, oh. you unmute, I'll mute. <laughs> okay, so I just wanna first of all say thank you so much for these precious teachings, mm -hmm. Venerable Yunten. I mean, you are an invaluable resource. It, it's, speaking from my own personal experience of your teachings, I learned so much from every sentence that comes out of your mouth. It's, it's really um, and not only an engaging teaching, but um, you just explain so many aspects of, of each part of, of the teaching. So thank you so much. And I hopefully I'm speaking for all of us when I yes, say that yeah. um, it's been very precious and 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 thank you for the bottom of of my heart and from all of our hearts and please continue to teach and come back and teach for us many 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 times um <laughs> and have a very very long life so that you can continue to teach us and so on and so forth um um 
I also uh, wanted to, um, I, I accidentally pushed that chat a little bit early. Um, so I sorry, I'm, I apologize for that. But what I wanted to mention uh, to all of you here, uh, we are in a new age with the pandemic, we're uh, figuring out this hybrid program. So thank you all for your patience with that and the little hiccups that um, we're coming along um, throughout this process. Um, but normally in our tradition, um, da, there's a dana, right? At, or generosity is one of the cornerstones of our Buddhist path. And the Buddha and the ordained Sangha express generosity through offering a model of a Dharma practice, Dharma teachings, and um, other services to sentient beings. And the lay community, who are, which means the, the, those of us who are not in robes, traditionally practice generosity through supporting Dharma centers and the monastic community, meaning like the Sangha and those who are in robes. So this interdependence is essential for us to share the Dharma and continue our work to benefit all sentient beings. So while we're affiliated with the foundation of the preservation of the Mahayana tradition, um, often you may hear it called FPMT, each Dharma center in the organization uh, must find their own sources of community support. So it's only by the generous support of our community that Land of Medicine um, Buddha is able to flourish. So um, Land of Medicine Buddha is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and all donations are tax deductible. So all funds supporting the center go directly to pay our overall operating expenses, utilities, salaries, insurance, land and building maintenance, teacher offerings, um, like our, our wonderful venerable Yunten here, and Dharma materials. We're great, uh, deeply grateful for your generosity, which help us to achieve sustainability now and for future generations. So if, you'd, uh, if you've enjoyed the program and you'd like to make a donation to Land of Medicine Buddha, you'll see uh, the link in the chat. Um, which I sent, um, you can do so with debit, credit card, um, or PayPal, a PayPal account through that link. Um, now, if you'd also like to make an individual offering to uh, the teacher, Venerable Yunten, um, at the end of a Dharma teaching or program, it's traditional for students to offer the teacher a kata, an offering scarf that looks much like this. <laughs> and um, it's an offering as a show of, of, of showing respect and for thanking them for the teaching. Um, if a student is moved to do so, they may place a, a personal donation inside of a nice envelope as an offering to the teacher. This is typically offered with a kata, which is like a, a white silk um, scarf, and can be any amount with this with, which is within the means of each student. Um, it's a wonderful way to create merit or positive energy and support our teachers and sangha. So um, with this, I'm, I'm going to quickly step away from my camera so I can make this offering to Venerable Jensen. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and um and thank you all for being a part of, of this class, supporting our teachers and um and, and joining in and, and practicing Dharma for the benefit of all sentient beings. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Yes, please. If you're here in the Gompa, please feel free to. Um, offer a kata to <laughs> venerable. So know. thank the Zoomers. Um, I know you probably got to go have lunch. So thank you so much people online and we'll, we'll call it a day and uh, really happy long life, happy long life, happy long life, full of Dharma practice. <laughs>